May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we focus on Mary, Mother of Jesus. As we do this, as we light the last of our four coloured candles on the Advent of the Advent wreath, leaving the white one in the centre for Christmas Day itself. On previous Sundays in Advent, we have focused on the ancestors of Jesus, the patriarchs, such as uh, King David. We have also focused on the prophets who have foretold the coming of the Messiah, people such as Isaiah. And last week we looked in particular at the ministry of John the Baptist, who was the greatest of all the prophets, and who brought the Old and the New Testaments together. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we look at the woman who made it all possible, Mary, Mother of Jesus. The account on Luke chapter 1 is always used on this day. Famously, our reading today is the beginning of what is often sung in non-Covid times uh, during Evensong. It's known as the Magnificat. Mary is minding her own business getting on with the housework, perhaps, when suddenly the Archangel Gabriel appears. It's a meeting depicted thousands of times in medieval and other works of art. Indeed, this style of painting has become known in the art world as an annunciation. Gabriel, chief messenger of God, announces to Mary, hence the word annunciation, that she is going to give birth to a baby boy. Gabriel has already, months before, announced to Zechariah in a different annunciation um, that he would be the, one of the parents of John the Baptist and that he and Elizabeth are to have that child in nine months' time. Zechariah's response, though, is quite different from Mary's on hearing the news of the Archangel Gabriel. And Zechariah is left unable to speak after the encounter because he questions the news from Gabriel and demands proof. Mary does things quite differently. It's not that she isn't full of questions, far from it. The angel knows that she's scared, and that's quite reasonable. But she doesn't question the plan. She doesn't question the motivation. He wonders about the mechanism, yes, that's true, but is willing to go along with it, whatever God wants. Crucially, unlike Zechariah, she doesn't demand proof of the ability to God to deliver, which was what got Zechariah into trouble. If he'd had questions and even voiced them, yes, he would have been okay, uh, God created us human, and curiosity is therefore divinely created. But it's not okay to question God's word or his sovereignty or his ability to deliver on things in this universe. Hence, Zechariah was given a reminder about speaking inappropriately. Mary, in contrast, and even though she was confused, in faith, simply said, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. It was an act of submission, dependent upon faith alone. She was indeed frightened. She was indeed worried. She was concerned too about what Joseph and her family would say, and what they would think, and what they would do. As I've said before, the death penalty could have been called for. But this plan was of God, and that was enough for Mary, for now. And it is at this point that, of course, we could get bogged down in Mariology, the, the study of all sorts of things to do with the Blessed Virgin Mary, and that would be very worthwhile, as she is an example to us all. But today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. 
and we need to do something different today. We need to do different work today and not get lost in a discourse on all the features of Mary that made her wonderful. In fact, we could leave that until March the 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, couldn't we? But because today is the last Sunday of Advent, we need to draw together the threads that make the Incarnation possible. We need to draw together uh, this lust of our coloured orbital candles, if you like, around the Advent wreath, and bring it to the white one at the centre, the one which we light on Christmas Day. We need, in short, to emphasise the importance of Mary to the birth, the incarnation of God, and therefore not dwell too much on some of her wonderful features, but instead relate it directly to the incarnation on this occasion. We need, in short, to emphasise Mary as Theotokos, the God-bearer, who made possible God's plan of salvation by giving birth to Jesus, who was God-made man. The candles of Advent are a countdown to this incarnation, which we celebrate, of course, on Christmas Day. The ancestors created the line through Joseph. The prophets announced the coming of the Messiah. John the Baptist pointed the way forward and later physically identified Jesus. And Mary made the birth possible. But not only that, Mary was involved in many other things. She was involved in Jesus' safety as they, as a family, rushed to Egypt to escape armed killers. She was involved in his well-being and upbringing, first as a refugee in a foreign land and, and then as a Jewish boy in a Jewish village. With Joseph she looked after him, brought him up, made him attend the local synagogue, the equivalent of church of course, and helped him learn a trade and set him up for adult life. Later of course she was involved in Jesus' burial, and afterwards was an important witness to his many resurrection appearances. But most of all, Mary made the Incarnation possible. She enabled God to become man to an act of selflessness and faith. There is certainly a message in Mary's response to God's call for all of us. But perhaps there is another message too. We might not get a visit from an archangel announcing what God's plan is for us in this life, but we can be sure that God does have a plan for each and every one of us. Therefore, the thing for us to be aware of, the thing for us to discern is God's calling for each and every one of us. Even though we might think of ourselves and our situations in life as being quite ordinary. Remember, that was the case for Mary too, 30 seconds before an archangel arrived in her house. We need to use the time that is given to us this Advent to try to discern God's will for all of us and then in faith to respond appropriately, fully, warmly and even if we are afraid. This Advent, give in fully to the grace of God which makes all things possible for people like Mary and for all of us. Amen.